Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem find unique binary string, a problem from this afternoon's leak code contest. And the thing about this problem is that you probably know how to solve it immediately as soon as you read it, but you might not know how to code it up. And that's, I guess, what I'm going to be focusing on. So we're given an array of strings. There's going to be n strings. All of them are going to be unique. Each of them is going to be of length n. They're all going to be binary strings, and we want to return a binary string of the same length n that does not exist in this set. If there's multiple answers, we can return any of them. So if there's n strings, if a binary string is of length n, how many possibilities are there? There's gonna be two to the power of n possibilities, right? And we're only given n of those strings. So obviously, if there's two to the power of n, there's gonna be a lot to choose from, so we can choose any of them. Now, what's the easiest way to do this? Since there's a guaranteed solution, we can just start at, you know, the zero zero case and then just start adding and then continuously trying a new string and seeing does it exist in this set? If it doesn't exist in the set, then we can return this as the solution. If it does exist, then we're going to go to the next string. So we'll just add one to this, right? So it's a binary string, add one. And then we try this. Does this exist? Okay, right now, yes, it does. Then we'd add one more. And then we'd get this string, right? This binary string. Okay, does this exist? Yes, it does. So then we add one more. Okay, now we get one, one. So one, one does not exist in here. So then we can return this as the solution. That's the, that's the one that we returned in this case. We could have also returned zero, zero. Now, one optimization is how can we quickly check if this string uh, exists in the given set? Well, we can convert this. It's not really a set right now but we can convert this into a hash set right now it's a list but we can convert it into a hash set uh what's the time complexity of this going to be like since we're brute forcing it how many attempts how many numbers is it going to take us how many times are we gonna have to count before we can find one that's in this set well there's only n in this set so uh worst case we have to try n plus one different strings and that's the worst case and then when we're checking the operation does this this does the string exist in the hash set is that going to take some extra time? Well, the string is of length n, and to hash a string of length n, it is going to take an n time operation. So overall, the time complexity, you know, this can be reduced to n. So we can just say the overall time complexity is n squared, where n is the length of any particular string. And like I said, the hard part about this is going to be coding it up. So there's probably a lot of different approaches you can take. I'm going to probably do one that's probably not the best, but it's the one that I was able to come up with first. So instead of actually counting, you know, starting at zero and then just adding one each time, I'm going to do slightly different because this is how I can code it up. We can do like a backtracking approach, right? So, you know, we can say, okay, the first character in our string and this backtracking is going to have a height of n. So if n is two, then the height of the backtracking is going to be two. If it's three, the height of the backtracking is going to be three. But we're going to generate a bunch of binary strings until we find the right one. So we're going to uh, go, we're going to take one decision to be zero, one decision to be one, one decision to be zero, one decision to be one. And just continue going like this until we reach the bottom level. Like basically we've gotten a length of two. We don't want to create a longer string than two because that's the length of these. So then we're going to check this one, right? So this is the first one that we were able to generate. Does this one exist in the input? It does not. So then we can return this string immediately, right? Zero, zero. Now, if it did already exist in nums, then we would have to try the next string, right? Then we'd have to try this one, right? But the point here is even though we're doing a whole backtracking approach, even though we're, we're going to be generating a bunch of strings, we're not going to be necessarily generating all two to the power of n strings, because as soon as we find one that works for us, we're going to return it immediately and then completely stop the backtracking. So the time complexity is not going to be two to the power of n. It's still going to be n squared. This is what I was able to come up with. I'm looking forward to seeing what smarter people than me were able to come up with. With that being said, we can jump into the code now. Now let's write the code. And remember, we are going to be converting the input nums into a hash set. So in Python, you can do it kind of easily like this for every single string in nums. I'm just going to add it to this uh, hash set. Uh, but other languages, I'm sure you can do it similarly. And I'm going to do this recursively backtracking, right? So uh, two parameters we're going to maintain. What the current string 
or first actually what the current index we're at, right? So what position that we're at in the string that we're generating and whatever that current string actually happens to be so far. And what's the base case gonna be? Remember, we're gonna stop as soon as we've gotten n characters. So as soon as our index i is equal to the length of the input nums, then that means we have made it as big as it can be. So that's gonna be our base case. I'm not gonna handle this just yet, First, I'm gonna tell you how we're actually gonna call this backtracking function. We know this backtracking is guaranteed to have a re have the correct result, right? So we'll pass in zero at the beginning. That's the index we're gonna start at. And for current, what are we gonna pass in? In most languages, I think you can do a string, but Python is kind of annoying. You can't modify the index of a string. So I'm gonna be using an array, and then at the end, I'm gonna mod I'm gonna change the array to be a string so that we make sure that we return a string because that's what they want us to do. So I'm gonna create a binary string of length n. Uh, initially, it's gonna be all zero, so whatever for how many characters happen to be in nums or how many strings happen to be in nums, I think. So we're passing an array of n zeros, and whatever result this backtracking returns, that's what the answer to this uh, problem is gonna be. Be. So now that you know this is what we're passing in, how are we going to actually handle the base case? We want to know once we've gotten a, a string of length n, is this string in current equal to one of these in the string set? How can we do that? Well, in Python, first you have to take this uh, array and then turn it into a string. So you can do that like this. You can join all the strings in current to be a uh, string. So let's set, assign that to result and we'll check. We're going to return null if this result is in the string set. Because remember, we're trying to return a string that's not in the string set. So if it is in the string set, then we're returning null. But if it's not in the string set, then we can actually return this result. That means we found the solution, we're good to go. So as soon as we find that solution, we return it immediately, and then we stop our function. If we don't find it, then we obviously have to continue. So then we do our backtracking, right? So like I said, we're gonna only have two choices. So we're only gonna call the backtracking two separate times. We're gonna obviously for the index pass an I plus one because we wanna shift to the next position each time. For current, we're just gonna uh, leave current as it is. So this is kind of the case where the uh, position at index I is just gonna stay as zero, right? This is the decision where we choose zero. And then we'll get whatever the result was returned to us. And if that result is non-null, right? Because we're returning two possible values either a string or null value. So if it's not null, then we're going to immediately return. This step is important because we don't want to generate extra strings that we don't need to. If we find the result, we return it immediately. Unfortunately, this is going to basically, I'm going to have to copy and paste these two lines. And I'm pretty sure there's probably an easier way to do this code. Maybe you don't even need backtracking, but that's what I was able to come up with. So if there's a cleaner way, let me know. But for now, I'm just going to copy and paste these two lines. So we're going to do the exact same thing except we're going to change our decision right instead of choosing zero we're going to change our decision to be one so at index i in current instead of remember by default it was zero right that's what we did down here i'm going to change it to one so that's the second decision so that's the main logic so if we find the result here we return it if we find the result here we return it by default what python does is it returns null so if if this if statement doesn't execute then by default it'll end up returning null and that is possible because in some of the recursive calls it could return null but at the root call this root call that we do down here this is never going to return null just so you know so that is the entire code i'll run it to make sure that it works but i already did that in the contest so so as you can see down below it, it was accepted i'm sure it's not the most efficient i'm pretty sure there's a better way to do this problem let me know in the comments but i hope this was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it supports the channel a lot Consider checking out my Patreon to support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.